Welcome to the Smart Grid webinar on the wireless WAN communications for distribution networking. This is Brian Jenkins from Trillions, and I'm going to focus this webinar on describing the role of the wireless WAN and providing a communications network for the distribution grid. I'm going to occasionally refer to this as distribution networking, and I'm going to describe the applications that are enabled by extending broadband two-way communications to substations and distribution devices. Before we get into the specifics of the wireless WAN, I'd like to start off by talking about the general needs for a communications infrastructure. Two-way communications enables utilities to monitor and control the electric grid, and integrated communications is required to enable smart grid applications. Integration ties together the various components of the grid to provide utilities with the data necessary to provide automation and ensure quality. The term smart grid, unfortunately, could mean many different definitions depending on who you're talking to. For most people, smart grid refers to more than just automated meter reading. And this slide is designed to go through the various different definitions of smart grid. On the left, you're going to see AMR, which stands for automated meter reading, which has been around for two decades and provides a way to automate a once manual process of reading meters. It has tangible benefits and has a proven financial return. Over the last two or three years, we have seen more interest in what's called AMI or advanced metering infrastructure, which takes the one-way communication of AMR and evolves that to two-way communication between the head end and the meters to enable applications like remote connect and disconnect, outage management, and time of use billing. But AMI on its own doesn't get to the full vision of a smart grid communications network, which is described on the right. Smart grid in this case extends not just to the meters, but also out to the consumers for demand response applications, as well as to the distribution network for distribution automation. Realizing the smart grid requires not only two-way communication, but also high bandwidth and low latency throughout the network in order to integrate communications across a converged network. A smart grid communications network that integrates these different tiers of a network involves multiple different organizations, each with multiple applications. What we're showing here on this slide is what smart grid means to the various different organizations that a communications infrastructure touches. So for distribution, a smart grid means substation automation and distribution automation and being able to provide SCADA throughout the distribution grid and being able to monitor and control devices like transformers and reclosers. For the metering organization, a smart grid network is all about automating meter reading and providing that remote disconnect capability, reporting on voltages and providing outage management and power restoration. On the consumer side, of course, this is where a smart grid has a lot of value in terms of providing dynamic pricing and direct load control and enabling applications for the, for the future, such as smart charging of plug-in electric vehicles and providing distributed generation for devices like solar panels on the roofs of homes. This converged network with multiple different organizations ends up into multiple different distinct communication tiers. So when we talk about consumer networking, we focus on what's called a home area network. And this is networking within the home to provide communications to devices like meters, in-home displays, thermostats, and direct load controls. Neighborhood area network provides the communication between meters to automate the meter reading applications and enable advanced metering applications. The distribution network is tied into what we call the wide area networking tier. And this is providing the long range communications that connect up substations and other distribution devices. And finally, all of this gets provided back to the head end software for the different organizations and their head end systems. This webinar is focused specifically on the wireless WAN. So we're going to focus now on the requirements for the wireless WAN. Of course, the very first thing that we need to address is security. And for a wireless WAN, in this case, we're talking about a 
completely private network that is owned and controlled by the utility from end to end with all of the encryption and authentication to ensure confidentiality and message integrity and privacy. The network also needs to be reliable. And in this case, we're talking about a self-healing mesh network that provides the redundancy and fault tolerance throughout the wireless WAN. It also needs to provide the low latency for, for grid reliability applications, the bandwidth to be able to provide applications like video monitoring, and the long range communication so that you can have links between substations that may be miles apart. And in this case, we're talking about technology from Trilliant that can provide links up to 10 miles apart and can hop over multiple links. So for an example, across five hops, you can extend coverage out across 50 miles. And there are a couple of different components of this wireless WAN. The gateway is the device that provides the start of a wireless WAN network that connects to a, a wired backhaul network. The extender is a device that takes that wireless WAN and extends it over multiple hops of a mesh network. And then the connector provides an endpoint on the wireless WAN mesh.